your friends. I'm Pastor Steve, and I welcome you to this special time of prayer as we pray for our nation, and especially in these difficult days immediately preceding the inauguration. I um, welcome our Narberth Presbyterian Church family and any other friends who are joining with us. Uh, we are one body in Christ. We do not gather tonight as Democrats or Republicans. Instead, we focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, who according to Ephesians chapter two has broken down the dividing wall of hostility between us and God, between us and ourselves and between us and our neighbor. It is Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. It has been a day of service throughout our nation. The children of MPC have had a meaningful day of service today. And tonight we serve our nation as we pray for God's mercy and justice and peace, asking God to forgive our sins, to heal us from the wounds of the past, and to give us hope for the future. And especially in this present moment, to give us grace and power beyond ourselves. We do this tonight laying down our own will and earnestly praying for God's will together. Uh, when we come to the prayers of intercession, you'll notice that each petition is enfolded in scripture because as much as possible, we want to pray prayers that are biblical and not according to our own preferences and opinions. In other words, we wanna pray in the name of Jesus. I'm grateful for those who are leading us in our service tonight. Uh, only our worship leaders will be unmuted as they do their individual parts. Uh, with all of the rest of us muted, we um, preserve the quality of the sound. Uh, but we do invite your wholehearted participation, uh, whether with verbal responses or in silent prayer, or even on your knees. As the scripture says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And a reminder that this prayer meeting will be, uh, is being recorded and uh, will be available on our website uh, by tomorrow. Hear now the call to worship from Hebrews chapter four, verses 14 through 16. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way that we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you how good and how pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in unity. Lord, we are aware of human differences among us, but tonight we pray in the mighty name of Jesus and in the bond of his love that we may rise above our differences and that we may pray together as one united body on behalf of our nation. We confess that we feel the weight of our sin and our frailty and our brokenness. Help us to turn away from all that is not pleasing to you. We confess that we feel the weight of fear and anxiety, but especially we confess that you are God, that you are our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble and therefore we will not fear. Help us to be still and to know that you are God. We declare that the battle belongs to the Lord. Our hope and our trust is in you. Your Father, have mercy, we pray. We pray in the strong name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
Micah 6 8 lays out the job description of those who would please God. What does God require of you, of me? To do good, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. We know that in these difficult times, we have, we have failed not only to do these things, but sometimes even to want to do good, show mercy, and embody humility. And in Matthew 5, 13 through 16, Jesus warns and challenges his disciples, saying, You're the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Y'all are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We've sometimes tried, but not always succeeded in being God's salt and light in this time of trouble. And so Leviticus 5.5 5 says that when anyone becomes aware that they're guilty in any way, they must confess to God in what way they have sinned when they seek God's forgiveness. With this in mind, knowing that we failed to live according to God's intentions, over the course of the last year, and in this momentous, nerve-wracking week of personal and national change and challenge, let's join in our prayer of confession. When I pause, you may pray the words on the screen. Following our time of shared confession, there will be about a minute for more personalized, silent prayer when you can bring your own particular need for forgiveness before God's throne of grace. So let's go to the Lord in our prayer of confession. Almighty God, you alone are good and holy, and we confess that our lives fall far short of your glory. We need your forgiveness and your power in our lives to purify us and make us humbly brave disciples, unafraid to do good and genuine in showing mercy. Dear Father, we do not ask you to keep us safe, but to keep us faithful to you, so that we may follow and become like Jesus, who, though tempted in all the ways we are, remained faithful to you. And so we ask you, merciful God, to hear our hearts as we confess our sin and our need of your deliverance. From lack of reverence for truth and beauty, from a calculating or sentimental mind, from going along with mean and ugly things. O oh God, deliver us. From cowardice that dares not face truth, laziness content with half-truth, or arrogance that thinks we know it all. O oh God, deliver us. From artificial life and worship, from all that is hollow or insincere, O oh God, deliver us. From trite ideals and cheap pleasures, from mistaking vulgarity for humor, O oh God, deliver us. From being dull, pompous, or rude, from putting down our neighbors, O oh God, deliver us. From cynicism about others, from judgmentalism or cruel indifference, O oh God, deliver us. From satisfaction with things as they are, in ourselves, in our families, in the church, or in the wider world, from failing to share your indignation about injustice, O oh God, deliver us. From selfishness, self-indulgence, or self-pity, O oh God, deliver us from token concern for the poor, for lonely or loveless people, from confusing faith with good feeling, or love with wanting to be loved. 
O God, deliver us. For everything in us that obscures your presence and hides your light, O God, forgive us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we will go to silent confession. Our assurance of pardon comes to us from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. People of God, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is unfailing love, and with him there is full redemption. Hear the good news. In Christ Jesus, God has redeemed us from our sins and made us new. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite you now to pass the peace by typing it in the chat feature at the bottom of your screen or with a friendly gesture from your box. Thank you. A reading from First Timothy, chapter two, verses one through six where Paul urges Timothy and us to pray for all people. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join me in intercession for our nation using the words of scripture. As I finish each petition with, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Father God, we come to you because the people of this nation and everything in it belong to you. We pray that we and all believers would seek you in humility and that you would bring healing to our nation. You said in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray that our nation would be able to emerge from its darkness and seek you and be a light to others. Isaiah 60, 2 and 3 says, See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh, Father, we pray that we, our families, our church and our nation would follow you and be blessed as you have promised in Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one in full authority and in control of our nation. We pray against any threat of violence this week and for a peaceful transition to a new administration on the day of inauguration. Romans 13.1 says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that, that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Father God, we pray that your will would be done in our nation. As recorded in Matthew 5, 9, 10, Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we pray for our fellow citizens and all of our leaders in government, as Paul exhorted Timothy to do. May our leaders receive wise counsel from their advisors and find mercy and grace before you as they look for solutions to the various problems that are affecting our nation. Daniel 2, verses 20 and 21, say praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray that our hearts and our nation would pursue righteousness rather than sin. Proverbs 14 verse 34 reminds us that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Mighty God, we pray that the fear of the Lord and godly wisdom would drive our actions and our country. Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray that each of us in our great nation would show love toward one another as you demonstrated for us through Christ. We pray that each of our words would be loving towards others and line up with your word. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 7 teach us that love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. 
Father, we pray that our hearts will let go of any anger or bitterness towards those with different ideas and show them love and respect. Ephesians 4, 31 through 32 exhorts us to get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray that our hearts would love generously and help those in need in our country. Philippians 2 verses 3 and 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God and Father of all, we pray that all people in our nation may be treated fairly in all avenues of life and especially in the judicial system. We ask that you raise up judges with high principles who will bring justice to all who come before them. We pray for an end to all racial discrimination and a change to the systems that perpetuate it. Amos 5 verse 15 says, Hate evil, love good, maintain justice in the courts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, we lift up those in our nation who are vulnerable and needy. We pray that you would deliver those in cycles of poverty. We pray for those who are disabled, that they would get the help they need to live with dignity. We pray for those in abusive situations and for the victims of sex trafficking, that you would help them escape. We pray that our federal and local governments would address these issues in ways that are just, productive, and sustainable. Psalm 34, 18 reminds us that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that we would be a nation who lives up to its name of United States of America and be united in love, mind, and thought. 1 Corinthians 1.10 says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say and that there is no division among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Awesome God, we plead for our nation. We pray for a great spiritual revival to sweep this land, beginning with us and impacting our nation's leaders. May this be a revival of repentance from sin, bringing freedom from addiction, restoration of family units and a de decrease in crime. May we as individuals and as a nation seek your face and love you fully. From Deuteronomy 4, 29. If you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we ask that you would hear our prayers and move in mighty ways in our nation. We beseech you, as Daniel did and recorded in Daniel 9, 19. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act. For your sake, my God, do not delay because your nation and your people bear your name. We pray all these things with hope in the precious name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'd like you...
to invite all of you to join me now in the responsive scripture reading from Romans 12. And I will begin. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. I invite you to pray with me, offering to God thanksgiving and rededicating ourselves to him in this still new year and this new season of life. Let us pray. Father God, in the midst of our ever-changing circumstances as a nation, as states, in our neighborhoods and on our streets, within our families and individually, and together as your church, we stop and we offer you thanks. We thank you that you are the creator of the heavens and the earth, and that you call people forward and give them life. We thank you for taking us by the hand, keeping us and forming us to be a light to those around us. We thank you for your call in our lives and your promise to open our eyes where we are blind, to lead us in new paths, to make the rough places smooth and to turn darkness into light. God, when the future seems confusing, uncertain, or gives us fear, we thank you for setting your son Jesus as our way as the truth, and as the life into which you call us. We thank you for the opportunities where you've opened our eyes and our ears, where you've softened our hearts to the brokenness and hurting around us. We ask that you would lead us to be a healing people, following the example Jesus set before us, and strengthened by your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your call, your promise, and your blessing for those who would extend mercy those who would follow you with a pure heart, and those who would work as peacemakers, being known as your children. We give you thanks for your provision in our lives in ways that are big and in ways that seem small. Thank you for being our good shepherd, our king, and our friend. And Father, we commit and we rededicate ourselves to you in this new season of life for ourselves, for our families, for our nation, and for the church you created. We ask that you would give us faithfulness to your call in our lives in all the specific, varied, and creative ways that you allow us to be your people. We pray that you would unify us in your Holy Spirit as your church to follow the call you have placed before us. As we rededicate ourselves to you for this new season, we respond to the question and call you gave to Joshua. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. 
Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. We give you thanks for your call in our lives, and we rededicate ourselves to you for this new season in the strength, courage, creativity, and wisdom you provide. In Jesus' name, amen.
grateful for that inspiring song and message. The scripture says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, we have been born again into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Can you say amen? I pray that this service has inspired us to renew our hope and our trust in the Lord. Thank you for your presence tonight and, of course, beyond tonight. I encourage you to be in constant prayer for our nation this week, that evil would be restrained and that the power of the Holy Spirit would be released. A reminder that this tonight was uh, recorded and uh, will be available uh, on our website. And also beyond the benediction, uh, feel free to enjoy a time of fellowship. Don't you miss our in-person worship when we would hang out in the Church of God forever? The good old days. Well, we can still do that in a modified fashion tonight. All right, are you ready to receive the blessing of God? It's got to be unanimous. <laughs> I want to remind you of who you are in Christ. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others, they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you and make his face to shine upon you. And the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>